Hello, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a screw fracture case that was sent to my office. And we're going to have a look at this and see how we can get this out very quickly using very few tools. So let's have a look at this up close in the or oral cavity. We can see that there is a screw sticking through the tissue. like to see this. However, the other one has grown over, so that's a bit more concerning because we know that the tip of the screw is likely up inside of the canal. So we're going to get both of these screws out, but let's have a look at the bridge one more time. Looking at the first side, we can see that this is the one that the screw head popped off. And so showing that the screw is, is uh, sticking through the tissue. But notice the wear and tear on the abutment itself. It's a titanium abutment. And so this has had some movement. And uh, this is how you know that the screw could possibly be fractured due to that movement. Now if we go to the other side, we'll notice that this is more of a concern because the screw is still in, in the uh, bridge itself, but the tip of the screw is gone. And so this is uh, showing evidence of movement as well. We can see that there's some wear and tear. So I think that the head of the screw came off first and then the bridge started to rotate back and forth. And this is what uh, caused the patient to finally lose the bridge and have to come in. Now you look at the patient's occlusion and you can't see it here, but she doesn't have any back teeth in the uh, upper left quadrant. So she needs to get some posterior teeth repaired. Looking at this, there's the head of the screw that broke and there's the other side that has the tip of the screw that broke. So we're gonna have to fix this and put two brand new screws in of course, but the screws need to be taken out prior to us doing this and that's the concern. Putting new screws in is not a big deal. And then we have to think long term of protecting this. Here's the original screw that is uh, how it looks. And you can see how much of the tip is gone. So a very small amount. And then the head of the screw on the top one, you can see that this is where the screw will typically fracture if there's too much force. And this is so that you can get at the screw. But after the bridge rotated, then the screw on the other side started to fracture, just like a work hardening coat hanger bend. You bend the coat hanger. So here's my tool. I'm using the uh, fuzzy cotton tool. So you can also get this for COVID testing, <laughs> of course. You can see here that that screw came out pretty easy. So we wet the cotton swab and then apply it on the end of the screw and turn it and that gets that screw out because this screw is not under tension. Now we're going to use the other end of the COVID stick and go in and uh, get that screw out but you can't get to the, the implant. So this will require a little bit more thinking. I'll take the original bridge and put it on so I can see where I need to, to do the flap because I'm going to have to do a flap and have a look inside here but I don't want to go too far to the facial or too far to the lingual. So I want to be a little tiny bit to the lingual and then I'll do a releasing incision so I can have a good look at this. Because I need to see somewhat down into the implant itself in order to release this screw and to get it so that we can get this piece out. Because it's a very tiny piece, but we can't put the new screw in because this screw will be in the way for tightening purposes. Otherwise, I'd just leave it in there. So we'll use a molt. I uh, bought this from salvin.com. And these are great tools for elevating tissue off the bone. The tissue feels a little bit fried, uh, but not too bad. And then we'll go in and clean the top of the implant. So she's lost a little bit of bone around this, which is uh, typically what I'll see around the non-platform shifted type of approach. And so here we'll get this back on and try to suture this down and make it so that she can get uh, something in the posterior. See behind the canine, she doesn't have any teeth to support her occlusion. So the pressure is coming on the lateral aspect of the bridge. And then the screw is the only thing holding this. So we need to use the other end of the COVID tool to go in and remove this screw. So we have to narrow the diameter because this little piece of screw is really far up inside of the implant. So I'll take an 8850KR diamond and start to just make it into a little bit of a spear and not make it too too much but we need to make it so it's going to be about the screw diameter so that it can go inside of the implant and get to the screw and then you rotate it 
and we've already got enough moisture here so we don't have to worry about moistening it but uh, it comes out fairly easy when you do this because the piece is loose do not screw in the wrong direction that would be a problem because you would be putting it down into the implant so tidy righty lefty loosey and so we're going to rotate it counterclockwise and then take that little piece out so there it is and let's get the camera a little closer so there it is there's the piece and now we're going to take that little piece and just remove it now we have to get a picture of it of course so we want to take it and put it on uh, somewhere we can take a picture and have a look at everything if we like to do that and then we'll put the patient back together so not really a big deal took less than 20 minutes to solve the problem but that is a small piece of the screw and at first you think okay how am I going to get this out do I have to order the tool you can order the tool if, if you go over to your local pharmacy or I'm sure you can order the tool off Amazon or I'll certainly sell you one I'll give you a good deal on it but just get a cotton swab I'm sure you use these for placing topical in your office and this is uh, a real good tool to try to use uh, especially on a conical connection type of implant because the fracture is usually above the platform when it's inside the platform you see that I was able to use the other end of the stick and just position that so that we can get it up inside but don't make things too complex uh, patients will often come in and say oh I'm so sorry doctor I broke this well that's what we're we're there for is to learn how to deal with problems and learning how to deal with a problem like this is something that all of us can do we have to get access we also have to have some type of strategy but you don't have to have expensive tools as you can see and this will enable you to get the job done so that the patient and you can get back on track because by now you're having a few patients that are building up in your front office and we all know what that is like it's the most stressful part of dentistry so let's tighten this down we'll take the uh, torque wrench and we'll tighten it down to 35 newtons and this will enable us to get the stretch on the screw which will position the implant but this patient is still going to have to deal with their problem they need to have this written in the chart that they need more teeth to support the posterior otherwise this is going to happen again and uh, this is going to be something that they have to deal with again and again and you know who's going to pay for that we'll put some gut sutures in because this patient comes a long distance and this would be more than adequate to support this but uh, the, uh, we'll of course, put some Teflon in, and this Teflon is uh, blue. It's been sterilized and uh, put in a bag, gone through sterilization. So you don't want to just put something in that's non-sterile. And then we'll put some uh, resin. I like to use uh, deep curing resin from 3M, and that resin enables me to get a real nice cure and fill the chamber so that uh, I can get back to the problem because if this was a cement retained bridge imagine the problem that would happen we'd have to make a new bridge this problem is because it's screw retained we can get back in and get the job done try to stay away from cement if you can more than the screw fracture it's more about the cement getting down and around the bridge and then you have a problem that uh, believe me they do cause problems I used to do them about 10 years ago and, and had a couple of problems where it's difficult to deal with it. And so try to do it in a meaningful way that's going to make it so that when things break, it's not if they break, then sometimes they break and you're going to have problems that you have to deal with just like teeth. And uh, so you have to be able to get in and, and deal with the situation. So looking at this, we'll light cure with a deep curing light and check the occlusion making sure it's all good because she's going to be possibly biting on the resin that I just put there and uh, then we have to get her to get some posterior teeth get some implants or a partial or something that will help to support her bite because this is going to give her lateral forces if she's functioning on this so we'll put the suture in and uh, then send her on her way so please share this with others and uh, thanks for coming in and spending some time. And this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a presentation about implant dentistry. And have an amazing day.